Well, got a fire going out here in the shop, in the stove. It's nice and warm. I just got finished with this pull type aerator. I <laughs> missed a whole lot of good video I could have put on this. Uh, I put a swivel hitch in it. The fellow I made it for, I, I was going to put a ball on it, but <clears throat> he wanted just a regular forked hitch like this to just drop a pin in for his four-wheeler. But if you were to do that and it's fixed, if the go over land and it's like that, you can break the hitch on your four-wheeler. So I put this rotating hitch in here, just put a piece of shaft in there, all the way to the back, welded a stop on the back so it won't pull out, and then put another piece here, then spaced it down so it can rotate. <clears throat> I was wanting to put a ball on here, just uh, Walmart, tractor supply, all of them sell just regular old ball hitch assemblies that fit nice on this two inch tubing, and that's two inch thick wall. And then all you do is you just set it on there, mark your holes, drill through it, and just bolt it on there. The nice thing about having a ball hitch on it is, uh, you know, it, it, you get flexibility like this and rotational flexibility from going over irregular ground like you will be going on the, uh, pulling it as an aerator in you know you may run over a hard spot soft spot whatever this one's only 48 inches long or wide i should say uh i may have put too much tongue on here i don't know uh i think it looks pretty good i braced it and uh anyway it seems like it's gonna work pretty good the one thing i probably need to start working on a little better is like i said before is capping these ends off uh bees and stuff like that will get in this stuff if you don't watch and especially something like this if you just push it over the edge of the woods and use it just once in a while you can get a bee's nest in there and then you know all these ends this tubing perfect place for bees to get and then there you are i did not make this thing so you could put fluid in it uh if you're wondering what these pieces are here the tubing that I dropped inside sitting angled like that and welded in there. That's because I have this, uh, this is actually a piece of metal that I got from work. And as you, if you can see this, this uh, how it's got that V in it right there, that will sit directly on top of this. I'm gonna drill holes and just bolt that guard on here I'm just gonna drill a hole right here on both sides and then through the through that piece of metal. That's an old piece of metal from, uh, uh, I don't know what you would call it. It's a, like a, a barrier, walk-through barrier, walkway barrier type thing. It, it had plates on the end here and it's just for like forklift traffic to sort of keep forklift traffic or, uh, it ain't really a handrail, they make it that high, but anyway. That's some old scrap stuff we had discarded at work. But uh, anyway, this uh, it, these spikes are so sharp. And uh, I mean, they are sharp. And if you were to trip and fall on this thing, it would definitely ruin your day. Uh, so I, the paint and everything on this is still wet right now. Uh, but anyway, I just put plenty of paint on it. I primed it good and then I painted it uh you know it probably won't look good forever but it I'm not saying it looks great now but it looks a lot better when it's got some paint on it and it should do what he wants the only issue i think may ever have with it is because i used an inch and a quarter shaft all the way through this thing uh the bearings are of course inch and a quarter pillar block but the uh, set screws that lock that are fairly small now I may have to, what I'm getting at is you may have some some shifting going right here. And, uh, you know, when you pull it, and it may want to walk over because they just won't keep it tight. They're, I think they look like quarter 20 Allens. Now, that ought to keep it there and hold it, but if it don't, what he'll have to do is come in here and put him a collar right here on the inside so that it won't, won't shift and, you know, foul the, the aerator up against the, uh, the the hitch and everything here 
but I think it'll be all right. But when I most of them I've made, I've used two inch shafts and two inch pillow block bearings, of course, and they have a lot bigger Allen in them, and you know it's just more substantial, easier to tighten up. Uh, anyway, and you can order those pillow block bearings if you're doing something like this or want to do something like this. You can order them pillow block bearings pretty cheap on eBay. I ordered the pair of these. They were Canadian. I done throwed the boxes in the stove. But I think they were like, you could get two inch and a quarter pillow block bearings for, I think it was $25 maybe. I think it was under 30 I think that's pretty good. Uh, what's funny is the two inch bearings, which I've got a whole box of them right here. Uh, I bought six or eight of them right there. And uh, they were, uh, Lord, I can't remember, wasn't that expensive. But one thing to keep in mind, too, is uh, I'm just going to show you a can of that paint. I don't know what I did with it. Oh, it's over here. Yeah, this paint right here, I've, I've had this. I just bought this paint from uh, Track Supply maybe, uh, I bet it ain't been two months. And this paint, you have to pop the cap off of it and take my air compressor and it's got that little uh, rubber tip on the end of that gun right there. You'll have to pop the tip out of the plastic. And, I, mean, I shook the can and shook the can and shook the can. I guess what I'm going to tell you is there's no substitute for just good paint. Good Rust-Oleum uh, paint or Krylon, there's no substitute. That paint over there is expensive, more expensive than that, and I got it mainly because of the color that it was when I was trying to match up the color on that Massa Ferguson 20 that I got, which, by the way, I'll touch base on that. I got my parts. That's the... That is the uh, drawbar carrier with the bolts. Uh, I had a drawbar right here to go in it, and that's not a bent one, that's a straight one. They make one that's got like a, it's not flat, you know, it's got an offset and crook in it. And then the fellow that I bought that off of, he actually had this, a set of remotes for sale on Marketplace. And I asked if he had any other parts. I said, well, I really need this carrier too. In his picture, there was a picture of some other stuff he had. I said, well, maybe he's got some other other parts I might need. He had that. He also had a drawbar, but I had one. So, And I got it at a good price. I got both of them. I got it yesterday. I was hoping if this – I'm only off today, so maybe next Monday or something I'll be able to get this uh, bolted up under that 20. I want to clean it up. This sits right under the PTO. That's why it's so grimy and greasy. I mean, that's not really a big deal. I'll take a scraper and clean that up. But you can see where the actually bolts to the tractor. It's clean. But just take a scraper and clean that up. And it's got the pin that goes in this or in here, so that's good. Uh, but that that's pretty substantial. It, to be honest, That one of the best things about having this is I can put a clevis out here and it's a really good point to secure the tractor on the trailer, you know, to run your chain through the clevis and tie the tractor down, whether you're tying the tractor to the rear or whether you choose to tie it to the front. You, if you put a clevis in here, you can pull it either way. The chain slips through the clevis nicely, so it allows it to get tight. Uh, anybody who's ever used, you know, uh, lock chain, you know, like that, which is what you want to use on your you know, dogging something down heavy. If you get it against something, say, that's got an edge to it like that, uh, you know, it, that's why you need to stop and check your chains once in a while because by the, especially anything that's got rubber tires on it, you're pulling, you hit a few bounces, you know, chug holes in the road or something or it bounces a little bit. It can flex and then it'll shift and make your load loose or make your chains loose and you have to check your binders. But if you got that clevis, the chain slips through it nicely. There's nothing, you know, to hang on. Less chance of it getting loose and you can get it tight the first time. They ain't saying you don't have to check it, but it just works better. I was going to make a piece to go on the front of my, uh, of my new Holland. Uh, I got it back the other day from the dealer and they put an extra set of remotes on it and then uh, 
widened my tires out for me, which I really, really like that. It feels a lot better on the, on the ground. Uh, my intentions for getting that extra set of remotes is I want to buy one of those offset flail mowers. And uh, just a thought, maybe quit cutting hay, quit baling and stuff like that, and just start doing more mowing. Uh, that's a little less time sensitive. Uh, I don't have cows. I just sell the hay. So, but once you cut hay, you're sort of married to it for a while till you till you get it up. And weather sometimes doesn't cooperate. And the other thing is, is uh, that, that's not my full time job. I just I just do that on the side because I enjoy it. I just like driving my tractor. And uh, anyway. I figured it's just something else extra to do, but it, <laughs> it's a lot extra to do. But I still enjoy it. So I don't, I ain't made my mind up that I could use one of those offset flail mowers for my own use a good bit. And uh, mainly mowing around the pond and stuff, and then mowing around the creek banks. And uh, I've watched a ton of videos about it. I think possibly I'll go with that Titan. But uh, I ain't, like I said, I haven't bought, bought anything yet. And when I do, I'll be glad to put it on film. And, give my opinions about it uh, but anyway got some other stuff I'll try to make a video later today and put on my dad bought a small another small bulldozer uh, we unloaded it yesterday gonna try to do a little work to it maybe sometime soon um, anyway I think the aerator turned out pretty good. I'm going to wait till this paint dries and I'm going to drill my holes and bolt this cover on. I think the fellow will be more than pleased with this. It's definitely much, much more heavy duty than anything you're going to get at uh, Lowe's or the Home Depot or, or whatever. You know, yeah, it's homemade, but I mean, it's an aerator. Uh, one thing I definitely want to do is I want to try to get a little better about cutting these centers out in these in my end caps and stuff. I know this one's off maybe I don't know maybe three eighths of an inch, but I mean that's hard hard to get a hundred percent perfect with the stuff that I have. But I mean you can't really tell it other than if you were to suspend it up in the air by these. You know I, I set it up on these jack stands and I can rotate it and it's you know it's, you can tell it's off center because it by the way it rotates, but Anyway, uh, just a quick glimpse at this, and I know I rambled on about some other stuff, but uh, like I said, I'm tickled that I got this set of remotes because if you remember from another video, I had a set over there also that go on a 35, 135, you know, 20. I mean, I think they fit 65, you know, and so on. Uh, my brother-in-law has a 65 and a 25, I think. Um, but also, I've got another set just like this, or my dad does, and it's still bolted to the cap. Uh, I need to get it off of the lift cap. We junked the tractor out already, but I'm hoping maybe I can get it working and then give that to him, and that way he'll have remotes on his tractor also it's a it's a nice tractor you know 65 massy it's gas uh, but i mean it works great he likes it i like it but anyway well i'll let you go leave a comment subscribe then i can get rich off of youtube just like everybody else have a good day